Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another installment of Diamond G Speaks. I'm Diamond G. You know, I'm in the house, and uh, what we're here's what we're gonna do. Generally, I would like to, you know, certain topics I like to talk about. Um, I had a couple of really good things that that I want to discuss. Um, I have a reaction to affirmative action, um, which you know I promised to uh, to my uh, my audience uh, last week. But uh, you have to forgive me. Um, I'm right in the middle of finals and. You know, being you know taking care of stuff at home, being a dad and a father, and you know these are the kind of things that I have to handle. But uh, you know, I'm going to going to post those videos shortly. But you know, I have a really nice treat for you guys. Uh, it's going to be my take on this uh, Sterling situation here, uh, the bigoted uh, Clippers uh, team owner who you know talked out of his face sideways to his uh, his girlfriend. Um, yeah, it's his girlfriend, and, he, and he's married. His girlfriend, who is a um, so-called black Mexican, you know, or Mexican black. Um, I don't know if she's really a black Mexican. Um, there are black Mexicans uh, as well that actually um, they originate in Mexico. You know, saying they call them Negro. So um, they are they are real, like true black Mexicans. But anyhow. Uh, I don't know if she's one of them or if she just happens to be um, a, what we call her, an Afro-American, Afro-Mexican American. I, I guess that would be the name for it. But anyhow, you know, it just kind of speaks, you know, to, you know, where, where, this, where this whole situation has is, is come from and where it's going. Now, you know, number one. You know, the way, thing we have to think about is would this have actually, you know, hit the fan had, you know, he, uh, you know, just kept his mouth shut, you know, and just kept on, kept his racist, bigoted views uh, behind closed doors or confined to the owner's box? You know, I think not. Um, there's several other mitigating factors that we see here, you know, magically, uh, no pun intended, Magic Johnson has been looking to get a franchise, okay? So he takes a picture with this chick. She posted on Instagram. His wife is also trying to get after him. Uh, 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 St uh, what's his name? So, uh, Sterling's wife. Uh, you know, she she's trying to take him down too. You know, so it was almost like a perfect storm how these things came to came together. But uh, quite frankly, um, I don't give a damn how it happened. It happened, and uh, it's it's it makes for a lot of fun, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about a couple of key things here. Uh, the one thing that's bothered me the most about this whole thing is the reaction in general. Now, um, from a philosophical standpoint, you know, I, I never, you know, look at things and just uh, take them at face value. You know, I, I take it, take a look at something. You know, I may lean back a little bit in my chair, you know, put my hand on my chin, and hmm, you know, give it one of those, right? Now, this is a situation that definitely called for that, you know. Now, instead of, you know, uh, these uh, so-called blacks and, uh, you know, so-called whites, um, you know, stepping back for a moment and trying to analyze the situation and, and see what the other, you know, uh, undertones of all this may be, they just kind of jumped on things and went, we got on this bandwagon, you know. So, you know, I consider a lot of the behavior, uh, typical, you know, American Negro behavior, um, you know, I'm not going to say that everyone that's involved in this uh, is an American Negro by my definition. Um, if you don't know what an American Negro is, it's not a compliment. Um, I would strongly advise that you take a look at my, uh, my previous videos where I go into depth and in, into detail about the differences and uh, where they actually stand within um, the so-called black community. All right. So what has happened here? You know, people are like, oh, this guy's a racist. You know, get him out of here. You know, oh, we don't need that kind of stuff in our league. You know, I mean, they're just going off the deep end, you know, and they're just really piling on. So you got them then you've got these, uh, you know, um, so-called sympathetic whites or so-called whites or liberals. They're piling on, you know, they're jumping on the bandwagon as well, you know. And then you've got my good buddies, the NAACP. You know, and, you know, a lot of you already know how I feel about them. Um, you know, they're they're just a, a, a just a, just despicable in many, many different facets. But, you know, we'll get into that. You know, we'll definitely get into that. But let's let's go with this whole bandwagon theme here. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are feeling really good about themselves right now. You know, they've been pardon me. They've been on uh, 
all these shows, you know, you got like the LeBron Jameses and, um, you know, the Dwayne Wades and, you know, you got Shaq chiming in and, you know, Charles Barkley chiming in, you know, and these guys are all like, oh man, this guy is great, you know, um, Silver is, you know, he's the people's champion, you know, it's like this guy is the new, um, you know, I don't, I don't know, he's like the new, I think of that they just kind of came in a new, the new vanilla ice I guess he's everybody's friend you know he's like transcended things you know the guy has you know he's crossed over you know he's supposed to represent the owners but now you know he represents the basketball players too and he's protecting the integrity of the league right you just just think about that the guy they, they really believe that he is protecting the integrity of the league okay now you know, as I sit back and I watch these individuals, you know, a lot of things come to my mind. You know, now there is a really, um, you know, a, it, it, it's, it's a glaring, a glaring um, observation that I've made here. And there's a lot of individuals who subscribe to a uh, step and fetch it type mentality. OK, now um, when we talk about that in this context, I'll say this. We know that. Uh, 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 Sterling or Sterling, the, the, the racist Clippers owner, bigger the Clippers owner. He's been owning that team since 1982, 1983. The guy has been sued multiple times. A hero of mine, you know, Elgin Baylor, sued him. He made accusations. Nobody took him seriously, though. You know, think about that. This man had impeccable character. You know, was uh, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And just, you know, ahead of his time. But the one thing he didn't do, he did not take any crap off of anyone. He demanded to be respected as a man. OK, now he was disregarded, swept under the rug, you know, and then all the time, all the meantime, uh, Sterling has been, you know, uh, harassing women, you know, harassing blacks, harassing Latinos, kicking people out of Koreatown, you know, all this other craziness. And he settles out of court. Justice Department goes after him. You know, I believe he beat the, ju the Justice Department, uh, supposedly is what they said. You know, but he settles out of court. He pays fines. He keeps it moving. Now, in, 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 a, in, a, in a league, you know, that has prided itself on talking about people having to have really good moral character. You know, they say that these basketball players like, hey, you're hanging out with the wrong kind of guy there. You know, you're, you're hanging out with your with the wrong kind of friends. You need to stop that. OK, you know, we can give them that. That that sounds good. But you mean to tell me that you guys as as, as the NBA owners club did not realize that this guy was was a bigot. He was open about it. Dude's 80 years old. He didn't just make the, he didn't just all of a sudden become a bigot. OK, now, not only is it a travesty to see how, you know, the response has been, you know, where everybody's trying to act like they're just all of a sudden shocked. But the NBA has had a culture of bigotry, you know, and discrimination for for many, many years. You know, let's let's not fool ourselves out of all the owners there. You have Michael Jordan, you know, who's who's the only quote unquote so-called black, you know, that is an owner. OK, and. That's out of 30, 30, uh, I believe there's 30 teams somewhere around there, 29, 30 teams, so whatever it is. You know, that that's that's an abysmal uh, uh, representation. OK, now they talk about this is a league that's full of full of blacks. That's that's the, the big thing that we've been hearing lately. You know, oh, the league is full of black players and, you know, we're not going to take it. Well, tell me what the what is it that you're not going to take? OK, you're not going to take being in a league where, you know, people who are bigots are open about it. You know, do you prefer the old NBA where bigots are in the closet about it? You know, and if you decide that you want to marry a white woman, all of a sudden now you're you're, you're kicked out. of You know, you basically relegated to the bench like what was happening in the, in the 70s and, and, and the 80s. You know, but these these things are real. I'm not making this up. Take a look for yourself. How many how many players that had such great talent, you know, that had to choose between their spouse and the NBA? Think about that. There's a lot of them. OK, this has been a good old boys network. OK, 
you de you're dealing with situations where these guys are sitting around all in like the, they're all in these little corporate corporate boxes, you know. And they talk about, you know, people of color, man. They, they talk about anybody. Talk about women. They say all types of things, right? So now what we are to, to kind of interpret as those who are learned people is that the whole culture of the NBA, it's acceptable to have these type of bigoted views so long as you don't get caught talking about them, okay? That, that's, that's, what, that's what has to be interpreted here. Well, take a look at it, okay? Just take a look at it. You know, you have a system in place, you know, where these uh, young uh, so-called so-called blacks, you know, they're getting paid a lot of money to do what? To, to play basketball, you know, to run behind a ball and shoot it, okay? That, that's what it is. And, uh, you know, I'm not mad at them, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I can get paid doing that, I would too. But the one thing that I would have would be my education. Now, I think what's happened here is that there's been so many of these these uh, these these poor pitiful souls that have really you know jumped on this bandwagon and they're riding it like oh you know we're not gonna put up with that you know uh, you know we we make up the league and this that and the third like no you don't you know how many people of color do you think you know that are going to work every day and work for a bigot and they have to do their job. They do their job. They get paid. They're not going to sit down and break bread with this guy. Right. So does that mean that these individuals are out of touch with reality? You know, do they, is, is it just that they are they that that stupid? You know, are they really that ignorant that they don't they don't know any better? You know, perhaps if they were holding down a real job, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm not not that not to minim minimize pushing a basketball to up and down the court and shooting it. Let's say they were a doctor, lawyer, construction worker, teacher, you know, what would they do? What would they do? You can't go into work and, you know, because your boss is a bigot, say, you know what, I ain't, I'm not working for you no more. You won't have no damn job. You'll be out of a job. You can't do that. You're under contract. As long as they don't breach, you know, saying what they're supposed, their responsibility to you and you don't breach your responsibility to them. It is what it is, you know, and that's the thing that's that's, that's kind of, you know, really taking me by surprise. Now, what I hope doesn't happen is that, you know, these, uh, you know, these these fools, you know, these American Negroes and um, those people of color who just happen to get caught up in the vacuum and these so-called liberal whites that are that are running around, you know, patting themselves on the back, thinking they've won some sort of uh, victory by this guy getting a quote unquote lifetime ban. Dude, lifetime ban? He's 80 years old. What, what, at max, what's he got? Maybe 20, 25? You know, you think he gives a damn about a lifetime ban? I promise you this. He can tie them up in court long enough. Not only, not only can he tie them up in court, you know what I'm saying, but he will be he can get back in that building until the day that he dies. That man is no joke. You know, you don't think he, he understood the whole, you know, uh, levity of the situation. There's no amount of pressure you can put on a guy like that. Okay? He's old. I mean, he, he's set in his ways. You know, it's funny. We're told, you know, when we encounter that kind of stuff in, in regular society, we're like, hey, you need to be the bigger person. You know, walk away. You know, somebody calls you, you know, a racial slur or, or demeans you. You know, you'll be the be better person. You, 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 you report them to human resources, but you go back to work. That's what we do in regular society. Okay? So, you know, it's, it's just a, a troubling trend to see. Okay? But the most troubling of all is how the NAACP, man, they've got their hands all covered in the boo-boo. I'll say it again. The NAACP has got their hands covered in boo-boo, okay? Now, everyone, uh, you know, should know how I feel about the NAACP. Um, I'm going to, you know, just say it straight up. And if you have small children covering their ears, the NAAP, NAACP, they ain't shit. I'll say it again. They ain't shit. NAACP ain't shit, okay? Now, I want you to take that in for a minute. You know, let that marinate a little bit. 
Okay. Now I'm going to ask you another question. Raise your hand if the NAACP has done anything for you directly. Not talking about some misguided, you know, uh, you know, kumbaya, we shall love, overcome, two-step. We ain't talking about that. I'm talking about to you, you know, saying, Mr. So-called black man and black woman. M you, Mr. So-called uh, Caucasian man and woman. Because, hey, the NAACP is supposed to be there to help everybody, right? What has the NAACP done for you? I'm waiting, you know what I'm saying? Raise your hand if they've made your quality of life better. Uh, not here. Still waiting. I don't see your hand going up. Okay? What they are is an embarrassment. Okay? Now, these two bit step and fetch it type Negroes, you know, who promote this sort of like a, a house Negro mentality, you know what I'm saying? And they step right in line with Willie Lynch, uh, with the Willie Lynch doctrine, you know, and they execute it to the fullest, you know. They need to remove themselves completely. Now, Everybody's like, oh, oh, what? the NAACP, we're so proud of them. He ain't getting that Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm like, damn. Are we really that ignorant as a society that we don't, we, we don't, we don't recognize what's going on here? Really? Well, let me, let me, let me break, let me break, break some, uh, break some knowledge off for you. The NAACP had already given. This guy, Mr. Racist, you know, Mr. Bigot, doing all this stuff in plain view. They gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award already. He already got one, right? These Negroes gave him one, said that he was a pillar and a pioneer in race relations. You know, he helped black folks out. I ain't making it up. Look for yourself. Pull it on up. So when these Negroes get on TV talking about we're not going to give him his, uh, this, uh, this award here. And uh, we think that in order for him to prove himself to not be a racist, he needs to go and, and, to, and, and stay around black people. What? You could, I'm sitting there like, damn. What, y'all? Y'all didn't think I, I was going to hear you. Is that what it was? Do you believe that the majority of us are so dumb that we don't follow what you say? Now, what kind of an asinine approach is that? Let's think about that. Does you having to hang around with a person of a different race, if you are a bigot, is that going to make you a better person? No, it's going to make you a smarter person. You know, for instance, you know, if they take him and, you know, by their approach, you know, they want him to come on down and sit in the hood. He wouldn't last five minutes. There, but let's say that. They, let, they put him in the hood. Let's say they put him in. Yeah, let's try uh, the Shaw the Shaw projects. I don't even know if they exist anymore. Down in down down by Howard University, sandwiched in between Howard University. Now, you know, you put him down there. What is he going to? I mean, you think he's going to sympathize with those people down there? You know, what's he going? What's he going to learn from him? He's going to learn. Well, damn, I better not ever come down here again. You know, and he'll learn. You know what? Next time, I'll just be very careful when I talk about these niggers. Because that's what he's going to call them, right? Or what else could he learn from them? You know, maybe maybe the NAACP believes that he's, he can learn some Ebonics. You know, maybe that's going to enlighten him. You know, he'll learn, learn Ebonics, you know what I'm saying? And he can learn how nigger, you know what I'm saying, excuse me, nigger is a term of endearment. You know, maybe, the, maybe that can help him out. You know, that has got to be the most asinine suggestion I have ever heard. You know, if you have a person who is a bigot, you think having them around other people of color is going to change them, change them into, into a different type of person. You got to be kidding me. OK, there are people, there are teachers, you know, educators, you know, who work in the inner cities and they can't stand people of color. They'll call kids niggas right to their face. There are cops who will call blacks niggas to their face. OK, they're around them all the time. It don't matter to them. They're going to be who they are going to be, period. 